I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me today for another one of my videos. And today's video is a week of sewing and chat. And in this video, I'll be popping on every day in the week from Monday to Friday. And I'll be sharing a little bit about what I'm wearing each day, um, any sewing projects I'm getting on with, any exciting sewing deliveries, and then also a little bit about what I'm up to outside of sewing in general life too. So yeah, I always enjoy filming these videos, but I haven't done one for a while. I think the last week of sewing and chat video I did was in November of last year. And then um, I got stuck into Vlogmas in December. And then since um, the new year, I've been doing a midweek sewing chat video. So I haven't done a sort of chatty video that I then air on the weekend. But this week I thought it'd be the perfect time to do one because instead of my midweek sewing chat, this week I will have released my Sew Frugal video where I'm talking about my plans for the Sew Frugal Challenge, all about my sort of top three pattern picks and the fabrics in my stash that I'm hoping to use. That video should be out already, so I'll link it up above in case you fancy checking that one out. But yeah, I thought it was a great week to do this chatty video where I pop on every day in the week while the Sew Frugal video is out during the midweek. So yeah, there, here I am and it's Monday morning and it's just coming up to half past 10 in the morning. And I've been out this morning, I dashed off after the school run to run a few errands in town. But I'm back now, um, I should have the food shop arriving shortly. I've got a few sort of boring house type chores to do, but I'm also hoping to get a little bit of my next sewing project done. And I'll share about that in a moment. But I thought I'd start with, as usual, what I'm wearing today. And the sun is really shining outside today, it's a lovely day. It is still quite chilly though, so I've got on a sort of summery t-shirt and then teamed with a wintry cardigan. And they're both um, handmade. The t-shirt, actually I'm getting quite warm here sitting in the sun, so I'll take the cardigan off so you can see it a bit better. The t-shirt I made using this pattern here, which is the papercut um, solar sweater and tee pattern. I've got the old version, it used to be named the Kyoto sweater and tee, but it's now the solar sweater and tee. But it's a really nice and um, boxy, slightly dropped shoulder t-shirt and sweater pattern with a crew neck. And when I bought it originally, I really um, particularly liked the little ruffle on the sleeve detail, and you can see it on the model on the front. I thought that was a really cute detail, and that's why I bought this pattern. And I have made a few versions with the ruffle, but I also really like it as just like a relaxed fit t-shirt too, which is what I've done today. This is just a simple t-shirt without the ruffle. And I quite like it as, yeah, kind of plain t-shirt that works well to showcase quite a bold print, um, like I've got one today. And the one I've got on today, it's quite a nice fabric actually for a cooler day because for it's because it's actually quite a cosy t-shirt fabric. It's a pointel cotton jersey, so you can see if I move closer, you can see that pointel texture. And um, it is quite like a thick, yeah, thick cotton jersey fabric, so it is nice and cosy. And it's got this obviously mustard um, leopard print on, which I really like. I like the mustard colour. And I got this fabric quite a while back from Fabric Godmother. I haven't checked actually to see if they still have it in stock, but I'll have a look. And if it's in stock, I'll link it. And if not, I'll just link the fabric gob by the, by the website because I always find they have lots of nice sort of cotton jerseys that are perfect for t-shirts in stock there generally. Um, and I made the smallest size on the pattern I have, which I think is was described as the extra, extra small, which is for bust 32 and a quarter inches, um, which is pretty much me. But the actual pattern is available now in a slightly larger size range with a slightly smaller size than what I've got in my paper pattern and also a slightly larger size. So I think it now goes up to a bust of 46 and a half inches, whereas mine only goes up to a bust of 44 inches. It's a really nice, um, so it's quite a boxy fit. I'll stand up so you can see, it's definitely not a fitted t-shirt by any means. It's quite a lot of room in it, so I quite like the sort of slouchy feel of it. And I've teamed it with some ready to wear jeans and I've also had on um, this cardigan, which is a knitted cardigan that I knitted. And it's in this garter stitch, as you can see, with a sort of ribbing band around the front and at the bottom. And this is an adapted version of the Downtown Cardigan by All About Amy, which is a pattern I really like. It's my first cardigan pattern I knitted to wear myself. It's quite simple and straightforward. There aren't any buttonholes. It's quite a simple stitch, quite square pieces. Um, but I adjusted it to knit in a finer wool that I find works better through winter rather than just the extra cold days. I knit this one in a merry fine wool, which is the We Are Knitters Aran Weight Merry um, Merino wool. It's a really nice wool actually, it's a little bit drapey. It's great for just throwing on. I think it's quite like a hard wearing merino wool. So um, yeah, I found it's quite nice to kind of, um, yeah, not have to worry too much about keeping treating it too delicately. <laughs> but that's why I'm wearing today. I'll put a picture up so you can see what I'm wearing. 
And then my project, my current sewing project, which I've just started and I'll go in the other room and show you in a moment, that I'm working on is this pattern here, which is the Bloomsbury blouse pattern by Nina Lee, which is a pattern that I've been admiring for quite a while. This really pretty um, blouse pattern with this ruffle around the front. You can either make quite a sort of bold ruffle like this version on the front or there's a thinner ruffle available. Yeah, did I say it's Edwardian style? I think that's where it's inspired by. It's got this yoke at the front and the back with buttons down the back. And you can add on a little ruffle on the neckline and also on the sleeves too. So lots of pretty details to this one. And it's one I've been wanting to make for a while. It's not got the biggest size range ever. It, some of Nina Lee's patterns are available in two size bands, one for a B cup and one for a D cup. But this one's only available in the B cup from UK 6 to UK 20, with the largest bust being 46 inches. But in a moment, I'll pop in the other room and share with you what size I went for and the adjustments I've made to my pattern pieces. Um, but I'll show you the fabric I'm, I'm using for my version as well um, while I'm here, because I've got that. Um, this is really pretty viscose crepe fabric by Atelier Brunette. And I got this from Minerva. They have a few different colourways available, um, like an off-white and a chestnut colour and a smoky colour. Um, but I went for the black. It's really pretty, um, sort of, I think almost the print looks like it's almost moving. I think it's got lovely movement to it and the sort of, um, the sort of prints. Um, it's a really lovely viscose crepe and I'm really looking forward to turning it into the um, Bloomsbury blouse. I think it'll be really lovely and the ruffle will be really nice and drapey and pretty in this fabric, hopefully. But yeah, I'll share a bit more about that in the other room in a moment. But while I'm on, I thought I'd also share with you how I'm getting on with my latest knitting project. And you might have seen the start of this knitting project, or I might have shared the pattern at least, um, if you watch my midweek sewing chat from last week. I think it might have been episode eight, <laughs> although I'm losing track slightly. I'll link it above if I can figure out which one it is. But I'm working on little blankets. I had some wool left over from another project I made for my daughter. This sort of sparkly pink wool, and I wanted to use it up. So um, my husband suggested I make a little blanket for my daughter because she's really into... Um, using blankets on her toys right now and her dolls and things and she's got some little knitted blankets that my mum knitted that she uses quite a lot um, for playing and I thought um, it'd be nice to make an extra one with a pretty stitch. So I found this really cute pattern um, on lovecrafts.com, I'll link it down below. It's called Lace Heart Blankets, it's got this really cute sort of lace stitch that makes a heart shape. I thought it'd be a fun one to knit and I thought I'd show you the progress on my one. So here it is as it's coming along. And it's a really fun one to knit actually, I really enjoying the lace stitch. I have to think a little bit about it because you have to make sure you're in the right row and putting the sort of lacy sort of stitches in the right place. But it's quite repetitive as you can see, so it's quite satisfying to kind of be working on up. And I don't know how many rows I'll get to, I'm just going to go as far as this ball of wool allows, but I'm hoping I'll maybe make a few more rows. I think the pattern is for 10 rows of hearts, but I don't think it'll matter if I stop a bit short of that because as I said, it's just for dollies, so it doesn't need to be huge. And actually, I'm not knitting in the right wool. Um, the pattern is for an Aran weight yarn and 4.5 millimetre needles, but I've got double knit yarn. So I've just sized down the needles. I've got my four millimetre needles instead, and it's coming out, I think, um, a nice kind of, I think it's coming out nicely anyway. <laughs> so that's what I'm working at the moment. So I am enjoying working on that in the evening. So I'll let you know how I'm getting on with progress on that later in the week. But yeah, I'll finish off here and I'm gonna go and set up in the other room. Hopefully I've got a bit of time to get my sewing pattern pieces out and show you where I am with the Bloomsbury blouse before the food shop arrives. So I'll see you in a moment. Bye. Hiya, I'm back again. I'm at my sewing table come dining table now, and I've got it all set up ready to hopefully do a little bit more on my Bloomsbury blouse sewing project. So I thought I'd share um, how I decided to get on with the sizing. So I decided to go for a size six on the bust and a size eight on the waist and hips, and that pretty much correlated to my sizing. I'm a bust 32, waist 26, hips 36, and that's pretty much bang on for a bust size six and then a waist size eight and hip size eight for this pattern. So I've got all the pattern pieces traced out. And I often have people asking me what um, tracing paper I use. So I thought I'd mention I use Berda tissue paper, which I got from Amazon. I link it below. It comes in a little sort of folded up pack. You just spread it out and I find it's quite nice to work with. And it's sort of not too delicate, but it's um, thin enough to be able to see through quite nicely. So that's always what I've used and I quite like it. Um, but yeah, so I've traced out all the pattern pieces. For the sleeves, I decided not to add any length, and I usually do add length to a sleeve when I want it to be sort of wrist length. But this is like a bracelet sleeve for this blouse, and I thought that might be quite nice for spring, actually. So I thought I'd just go with the length of the pattern and hopefully end up somewhere between my elbow and my um, wrist, and I don't really mind exactly where. But I'm not going to add the ruffle on or the neck ruffle, because I just think that'd be too many ruffles for me. I'm just going to go for the ruffle um, around the yoke, because that's the feature I really liked about this pattern. Then for the bodice, I decided to actually, 
So I changed out the pattern piece and I went for, I graded between a size six and eight, but I actually added a little bit more space here at the bust. I don't know why I did it. I just think I'm, I'm conscious that Nee and Lee patterns are, I find come up fairly on the fitted side. And I, I thought with it being quite drapey fabric, if I added a little bit more volume there, it'll maybe give me a little bit more comfort, but also it wouldn't look too oversized because it's such drapey fabric, so it would fall nicely. And the other thing I did was scoop out a little bit here on the armhole. So I just brought it down by about a centimetre. It was about here. I just scooped it out a little bit down here on both the front and back pieces, just to give me a bit more room around the arm ski, if that's how you say it, or the arm sky. I never know how to say that, but a little bit more room around there because I sometimes have found with other Nina Lee patterns like the Bakerloo blouse, it's come up that little bit tight when I've done a twirl. And I didn't want to twirl this one. I wanted to just get stuck into it, but I thought there's no harm in maybe bringing it a little bit down just to make sure it doesn't sit too tightly around my armhole. So I scooped out those bits and I also added on a little bit more width on the sleeve pieces here just so that then the sleeve piece will still fit the slightly widened armhole. So that is all my pieces cut out. On the, for the ruffle, I decided to go for the full larger ruffle. I want that to be the feature on it. I don't think it'll be too, I think it'll be nice and subtle, hopefully, with the drapier fabric. So I don't think it should be too much, fingers crossed, um, going for the full ruffle. So it's going to be essentially somewhere, like, I think you maybe fold this over a little bit and hem it. So it should be I don't know how big it'll be, maybe about sort of three quarters of this or something. So it should be quite a cool ruffle, hopefully. So my next step is to cut all the fabric out so I can get sewing. So that is my plan for this morning, probably um, in between the sorting out the food shop. So I'll leave you to it. Probably that'll be it for me popping on today. And I'll see you tomorrow morning and let you know how I've got on today. So yeah, see you tomorrow. I thought I'd pop outside today actually and show you what a lovely day it is. This is the big tree outside our house and there's you can hear a bit of birds, birds tweeting in the background, hopefully. Yeah, really lovely, sunny day. Hi there, it is Tuesday morning now. It's just coming up to midday and in a moment I'm going to head off and make myself some lunch. But I thought I would pop on here first and share what I'm wearing, what I've been up to this morning and I've got a couple of sewing items to share too. It's a really lovely day today actually. The sun is shining again and today it feels a little bit warmer outside. Definitely feels a bit more like spring is on its way, so fingers crossed. And I took the opportunity after I dropped the children at school for going out on a run because it seemed like such nice weather, it seemed a shame not to get out in it. And I hadn't been for a run for a few days and I do find it always lifts my spirits getting out for a run. And it's a lovely route actually, it takes me past some blossom trees. I think they're magnolia trees that are now flowering, they're really pretty. So. That was really nice, um, but I'm back now. And then this morning I've been doing a few chores and I also filmed my So Frugal Plans video. So it's all filmed now, I just need to edit that, which I'll do a bit later so I can get that up this week. And it should already be up before this video comes out, but I'm pleased to have done that. But anyway, since it's such nice weather today, I decided to wear a slightly more spring-like um, outfit. I've got a ready to wear white t-shirt on and I've layered that with a um, pinafore that I made hack by hacking this pattern here which is the Ogden Cami pattern by True Bias. It's a really nice and um, woven top pattern. Um, it's quite a simple sort of boxy fit with this deep V at the front and back and these spaghetti straps. And I think it's such a simple shape, it lends itself really well to hacking. So for my version here, I sort of cropped it off here, sort of empire line and added on a gathered skirt and I've got pockets um, too in the sides. And yeah, it's quite a nice simple hack and I think it, this pinafore works really well layered over different tops, like a white top at this time of year. And I sort of paired it with a sort of um, high necked black top in winter to keep me cosy. But um, yeah, in terms of sizing, I usually go for the size zero on the Ogden Cami if I'm just making it to wear on its own, which is pretty much my measurements. That's for a bust of 32 inches. But for this version, because I wanted to layer it, I actually sized up one size just to give a bit more room if I'm putting another top underneath. And the fabric I made this in is a Rifle and um, Paper Co cotton, which I got from Lamazi Fabrics. I think they still have it in stock, so I'll link it down below. There's also quite a pretty um, navy blue colourway of it too. It's kind of like a quilting weight cotton. It's definitely more substantial than a cotton lawn, so it works quite well as a pinafore because it's got a bit of weight to it to kind of hold the pinafore shape. But I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. This is actually a picture from earlier when I was quite hot after my run, so I had bare legs. I've now put on a pair of leggings um, and socks. It's my children's swimming day, so I always wear leggings and socks. So I can whip the socks off in the changing room so I don't get soggy tights um, or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. I thought I mentioned actually, it was funny when I was out on my run, um, I wasn't wearing anything um, handmade. I haven't made a lot of active wear. I've done some swimwear, but not really active wear. But I did um, wear a pair of shorts that I did alter slightly, which is this pair here. 
it's quite funny because they're quite tiny little shorts and my husband originally ordered them for him to wear running and when they arrived we both thought it was really funny because they were just far too small he tried them on and it just looked ridiculous <laughs> so I said maybe I could wear them instead because they seemed to fit me okay but because they were men's shorts they had one of those sort of um sort of pants sort of things inside you know um that often sw men's swimwear has too which I didn't really want so I cut that off and then it overlocked all around the edge here you can see just to kind of keep the edge because it's quite sort of sort of meshy fabric that I thought might fray so it's quite nice to be able to do a little sewing hack on them to make them work for me um but yeah they are really tiny shorts I don't know how I don't know what he was ordering there but <laughs> anyway it was quite nice to be able to adapt them um using my sewing and my overlocker to make them suitable for me for the run so I thought I'd just mention that but anyway I have had one sewing delivery arrive this morning and it's quite exciting although well I guess it's quite exciting although not exciting but it's a new um pedal foot for my sewing machine so I noticed the other day that my sewing machine which I've had I guess for about I don't know maybe five years now the pedal foot and the connection here you can't really see quite, oh my husband tried to tape it up has gone um has started to go and you can see the kind of wire coming through so it's definitely the connection there is going a bit iffy and I thought it's not going to last forever I think it's because I'm often taking it out and putting it away so it often just gets pulled around and I'm probably not very careful with it I hadn't really thought about that being a weak spot but I said to my husband, I think that's not going to last much longer, even with the tape, it's quite hard to kind of keep it together. So he found me a replacement um, pedal foot online. I don't know where it came from, but it arrived today. It looks exactly the same. Um, I've yet to try it out, but I'm really pleased to have that because I'd hate to have to, you know, um, replace a whole sewing machine or um, have to send off the whole thing to get fixed just for a little connection on a pedal foot. So yeah, that's quite an exciting little item that arrived today. So I was grateful for my husband for finding that. And I don't think it was too expensive as well, so much less... Um, much, much of an easier option than having to send the machine off or yeah, send the pedal foot off somewhere to be repaired. So that is really good. And in terms of my Bloomsbury blouse, I got that cut out yesterday, so it's ready to sew. So I'm hoping to get a bit of sewing in this afternoon. So what I think I'll do now is head off to lunch and I'll pop on again tomorrow and let you know how I've been getting on sewing the Bloomsbury blouse if I do get a chance to sew it. So just a quick one today, but I'll see you again tomorrow, which will be Wednesday. Bye. Hi there, it's Wednesday morning now and it's just coming up to 10 o'clock and the house feels very quiet this morning because my husband has gone to the office and it's his first time going to the office in months. I don't even remember the last time he went, um, but he had to go and clear his desk because they're moving to a hot desking system because everything's obviously changed a bit with COVID having happened. So yeah, I'm enjoying it being quite peaceful here and I actually was supposed to be going out this morning and meeting a friend. But unfortunately, her little boy's got COVID, so he's quite poorly at home. So she's had to stay home with him. So we've had to reschedule, which is a shame, but I'm enjoying the peace and quiet here. Um, not that my husband's around much. He's generally off working, but it does feel weird. The house is totally empty and just me. But actually, I've been out in the garden this morning because it rained overnight. So I took advantage of the wet um, flower beds and did some weeding. It was my first time doing some weeding this year. So it was nice to get the garden looking a bit more spick and span. But now I'm back in and I'm hoping to get a little bit of sewing done this morning since I'm not meeting my friend. Um, but I thought I'd pop on anyway first and share what I'm wearing and also the post has been, I've got something to share, sewing related that arrived in the post today too. But first what I'm wearing today, I've got a me made top on and a me made skirt and the top is from the um, Sew Over It ebook, um, their City Break ebook, which I've got here. Well, I haven't got the whole thing printed out because um, I bought the ebook specifically because I really like the look of this top, and that's the only pattern I've printed out so far. But it's this top here, it's called the Molly Top, and it's a jersey top pattern. I shall find the line drawings that probably shows it off a little bit better. You can make it as either a top or a dress, and it's got quite a dropped shoulder and fairly wide neck and quite a sort of relaxed shape to it. Um, and I really like this top. As you can see, I've had uh, fun with the stripes on it. So I've got stripes matching there and I like how the stripes then change direction on your arm because of how the dropped shoulder works. It looks a bit crinkled there. Um, and the fabric I made my version in here is a cotton jersey, which is um, one of Tilly and the Buttons fabric range they released a couple of years ago. I quite like it. I think the kind of pastel colours of the stripes are quite pretty and I've had a play with the stripes going the other way on the neckband. And the Molly's quite a nice, um, easy, simple sew. I've made the dress and the top and I just find it quite relaxed and easy to wear. In terms of sizing, it's only on Sew Over It's old size range. It doesn't have their full extended size range they have now. So it only goes up to a size 20 with a bust of 45. And I've always gone for the size eight. That's the smallest size on the ebook. It doesn't have the size six available, which I think they do on their patterns they release now. 
So I've always gone for the size 8, which is for bust 33, waist 26, hips 36, and I'm 32, 26, 36, but I don't find it too roomy around the bust and I've never adjusted. It's just fine as it is, I think. And then I've teamed it today with a skirt, one of my favourite skirt patterns. It's quite a simple skirt pattern. It's this one here. It is the Moss Skirt by Grainline Studio. It's quite a simple sort of straight fitted skirt. It's got a fly front, these um, slash pockets. It's got a yoke at the back. So it's kind of, looks like kind of like a traditional jean skirt, I guess. But I've made my version in a quite um, nice chunky corduroy fabric that I got from Minerva in a royal blue colour. And I'll stand up so you can see a little bit of it. But I'll put a picture up in a moment anyway. But It comes together really nicely. I find that Grainline Studio instructions are quite concise. They're not really wordy but um, they do take you through the process in a really methodical manner. So I think this was my first time when I made this skirt, the first time putting in a fly front zipper and it turned out okay. It probably wasn't the neatest fly front zipper ever, my first version, but it did turn out okay because I found the instructions were very clear on how you go through the whole process. And I've made my version. You can make it either as a sort of simple mini skirt or you can add an extra sort of um, panel on the bottom to make a bit of a feature. And I've kind of done a mashup of these, these versions because I like, like the sort of bottom panel feature, but I didn't want it to kind of come to knee length like this version would take it. So I sort of cropped off the top um, top skirt piece a little bit and then added on the panel to make a skirt that's somewhere between a mini skirt and knee length. So I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on me. I think with this pattern, in terms of sizing, I made my first version originally based on my measurements, which are will put me at a size two, which is for waist 26, hips 36. But then when I remade it, because my first version wore out, I ended up grading to a size um, zero at the waist, which is an inch smaller than my waist measurement. Because I think the skirt's designed to sit just below your natural waist, and I wanted it to sit more on my natural waist, just so I took it in a little bit there. And I quite like how it fits now. And in terms of the size range on this one, unfortunately, like the Molly Top, it hasn't got the best size range ever. It goes from US size 0 to size 18, and the largest size is for waist 37 inches and hips 47 inches. But it is a really nice and um, simple skirt pattern that I think goes quite well with a lot of different tops. Um, and I really like the idea of making one in denim. I've made a couple in corduroy, but I've never tried a denim one. I haven't got a denim skirt in my wardrobe, so maybe that's something I'll consider going forward. But that is what I'm wearing today. Um, and then let me share you, um, show you what arrived in the post this morning. I've been waiting for some buttons to arrive that I ordered to put on my Bloomsbury blouse. When I ordered my fabric for the Bloomsbury blouse, I didn't really, I must not have looked at the notions and I didn't really think about buttons. And then when I started tracing out the pattern pieces, I realised, of course, I need buttons um, for down the back. So I decided to go for some Atelier Brunette buttons to match the Atelier Brunette fabric. And I got them from Guthrie Garney because they have quite a nice range of Atelier Brunette buttons and they had the right size ones. The ones I got are 12 millimetre, which, which is specified by the pattern. So they came in this cute little paper bag in my parcel. Um, and I've got my fabric here so I can show you how they go. And I just went for their matte black buttons. They're quite nice and simple, as you can see. And I think they go really nicely with the black crepe fabric. So I'll hold one up there so you can see. So they're nice and subtle. Um, and hopefully, yeah, shouldn't sort of um, sort of fight with the fabric at all. So I'm quite pleased with those. And I actually bought, so the pattern specifies you need six, but I actually bought seven buttons because um, I'm planning to make a slight adjustment to the back of the pattern. And I thought I'd pop on in a little bit once I've got my um, dining table clear and I'm about to do some sewing to show you the adjustment I'm planning to make. So I'll show you that in a moment. But when I bought these from Guthrie Garner, I also bought one other thing, which is some more elastic for making knickers. <laughs> and I bought some more fold over elastic. I've bought Guthrie Garner's fold over elastic before and I really find it nice quality and I found it's washed nicely and it's nice to sew with. And I bought some, I saw they had available this hot pink colour. And I thought that would be quite fun for making some more pants or knickers for my daughter, but also for me. So I bought a decent amount of it because... I'm going to definitely be making handmade knickers for me and my daughter for a while to come, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm all stocked up with some fun um, laundry elastic. I think that'll be really fun to sew with at some point. I haven't got any immediate plans to make knickers, but when I do fancy a little quick palette cleanser project, it's nice to know I've got some more fold over elastic in stock. And I'll link the um, Atelier Brunette buttons and the fold over elastic um, down below in the um, video description in case you fancy checking either of them out, but they're both from Guthrie Garney. So that is what's arrived today. And so I think now I'm going to go off and hopefully do a bit of sewing of my Bloomsbury brows. So I'll pop on shortly and share with you the little adjustment I'm planning to make at the back, which means I need an extra button. So I'll see you in a little bit. Bye. So I thought I'd pop on and share with you a little change I've made to the construction 
of the back yoke part of the Bloomsbury blouse. So I've got the two back yoke pieces here and I've stay stitched around the two curves, the outer curve and the inner curve, like the pattern says. And I've now come to the bit where I'm finishing the sort of back bit that's going to go down your back and then the ruffle's going to be here and there's going to be the bottom piece underneath with the buttons. But I had a look on the pattern, I hadn't realised this piece here is designed to have no buttons. And when I had a look online, it looks like it does end up sometimes gaping a little bit because there's nothing to secure it's in place, which I guess is a design feature, but I'm not sure I'd fancy that for my version. I'd quite like it to not gape, particularly because I've got a drapey fabric, so I guess it's more likely to sort of flop about a bit. So instead of turning under this edge by one centimetre to then another centimetre like you're supposed to, I decided to turn under by 0.5 centimetres and then add a 1.5 centimetre strip of interfacing, which I've got in here. And I've turned over and I'm going to top stitch down it, so I'm going to end up with a slightly different finish to what it should be, which is a sort of one centimetre turned under hem. Um, and then I'm hopefully have enough space here, enough structure to add a buttonhole to sort of keep this part together so it doesn't gape at my back. So that is my plan. So hopefully it'll turn out okay. It should have been turned under by the same amount, by two centimetres altogether on each side. And it won't be the same sort of placket width as the button band down below the ruffle. But I don't think that'll matter too much because it's a slightly different feature for the yoke. But yeah, I thought I'd just mention that. Hopefully it'll turn out okay. Hi there, it's Thursday morning now. It's just coming up to midday and I managed to fit in a bit of sewing this morning, which is nice. So I thought I'd pop on now and share how I'm getting on with the Bloomsbury blouse and what I'm wearing and my plans for today. And it's a really nice day today again. After all the rain yesterday, today it's sunshine and it's really lovely and quite warm out there, which is really nice. But quite random, we had that one day of rain yesterday. Um, but I had to throw on my clothes in a bit of a rush this morning. I find when we're getting ready for school, some days go like clockwork and we sort of sail out the front door with no rush at all. And other days feel like much more of a mad dash. And today was one of those mad dash days. So once I got the children all ready, I just threw on some clothes. I've got on a pair of ready to wear jeans and I put on this handmade top, which is this pattern here. It is the Agnes top pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. And I really like this pattern for quite a casual, relaxed, comfy to wear jersey top. So it's just quite a um, sort of close fitting jersey top. You can make it with a sort of shorter sleeve or longer sleeve. There are also options to add ruching at the front or add these sort of puff sleeves. But I quite like just like this quite simple version here and that's what I've made today with the long sleeves. And it's got quite a nice scoop neck. In terms of sizing, it doesn't have the biggest size range ever. Um, it goes up to a UK 20, so the largest bust is a 44 inches. And I always make the size two, which is pretty much my measurements. It's bang on my measurement for bust and waist. It's one inch smaller on the hips, but I find with the cotton jersey being stretchy, I've never needed to grade out. But the version I'm wearing today is in this really pretty light blue colour with these little white flowers on, kind of ditzy floral print. It's such a pretty fabric. I got it from an online fabric shop that has um, unfortunately closed down since. That's a shame. But I bought um, this fabric. I really loved it. So I actually bought enough for an Agnes top to wear in more wintry weather. And I also made matching um, summery dresses for my daughter and me, kind of cotton sort of t-shirt dresses too in this fabric because I loved it so much. So I really like it and I think it goes really well with a pair of blue jeans. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. The picture looks a bit weird. My jeans look like they've got a big stain on them, but it's just the light dappling through the front door, the sunshine. Um, so that's what it is. So that's why I'm wearing today. And then in terms of the Blo Bloomsbury blouse, I've been really enjoying sewing it up actually. I've taken it quite slowly. I did a bit yesterday afternoon and yesterday evening, a bit more this morning, and it's coming together really well. It is quite a fiddly sew, I think, with all the sort of pieces to put together, particularly I've put in the neckband. Now it's hard to see because the fabric's sort of quite detailed, the neckband's in there, and that was quite fiddly to put in. And it was also a bit fiddly sort of piecing together the ruffle with the top yoke here. But it's all come together now, and I really like how it's looking, and I love how sort of drapey and the lovely movement this kind of fabric has. See, I'm really enjoying sewing it. Um, I have decided to French seam all the insides. I'll show you a little bit of that. You can see here on the sleeve, um, it's a French seam there running down to the bottom and the French seam on the sleeve here too. Because I thought the fabric is quite delicate. And I've also been using a Microtech size 60 needle to be safe as well with it. But I thought the fabric's really delicate and I want to sort of look after this top so I can wear it for years to come. So I thought French seams would be the best way to make sure it wears well if I do wash it and that sort of thing. Well, I will be washing it. Um, so yeah, I made good progress on it. And now I pretty much just need to add the buttonholes and buttons down the back of the blouse and then hem it at the bottom. 
So I'm hoping to do that later today or this evening so I can show you the finished blouse tomorrow. But it's been really enjoyable to sew, but definitely on the fiddly side. And I have taken it slowly to make sure that it ends up all looking just right and yeah, um, that nothing gets sort of snagged or pulled or sort of gathered in the wrong place or that sort of thing. And there's definitely a lot of gathering to do. There's a, the ruffle's pretty big, so there's definitely a lot of ruffling, gathering to do to get that ruffle into place. So that's how I'm getting on with it. And I've really been enjoying sewing that. I'm looking forward to finishing that one. Then in terms of my plans for today, well, other than hopefully maybe getting those buttonholes put into this um, blouse, I've got a few house tasks to do. I was actually supposed to be going to have my hair dyed today, but my hairdresser has got COVID. So I feel like my week's kind of been a bit written off because of COVID, um, but that's fine. It's not like an urgent rush to have that done. So that can be rescheduled. So instead, my husband would like me to clear up the shed because he wants to replace the shelves in there. So I'll be out in the garden doing that in a while. It's really nice weather for it. And it's nice to be able to get that sorted so he can get the shelves in when he has a chance, maybe after work. And then my son's got cubs this evening. So it's always a bit of a busy time trying to have dinner early to get my son out to cubs. So that is my plan for the rest of the day. So I'll probably leave you here and then pop on again tomorrow to hopefully share my finished Bloomsbury blouse and also the little lace hearts blanket that I have started, I showed you earlier in the week. I think I'm really close to finishing that. So I'm hoping I'll be able to show you that finish tomorrow too, which will be a quite nice way to end the week. So I'll say goodbye now and I'll hopefully see you again tomorrow. Bye. Hi there, it's Friday morning now and it's just coming up to 11 o'clock and it's a really lovely day today again actually. The sun is shining and it feels quite warm out there. So we've had quite a nice week of weather here this week except for the random rainy Wednesday. And at school today my children have what they call Fresh Air Friday where they pretty much spend the whole day outdoors doing different activities in the fresh air. So it's a really nice day for that. And I've been for a run this morning and then I came back and washed my hair, had a shower. Um, hence why my hair's tied back in a ponytail because it's just drying at the moment so I need to go and sort it out in a little bit but I thought I'd pop on here first and share what I'm wearing and also I finished my Bloomsbury blouse yesterday like I hoped I would so I've got that to share and I finished my blanket too so quite a nice way to end the week in this video I think be able to share those but first of all I share what I'm wearing today um I decided today would be a lovely day to wear a smock dress perfect weather for a smock dress and the pattern I'm wearing today is this one here which is the Cassiope dress by I Am Patterns. It's one of my favourite woven dress patterns. I think you can actually make it in jersey fabric too. There might be a hack on the website, but it's the original pattern is designed for woven fabrics. It's a raglan sleeve dress and it's got this sort of bat wing, which I like, and then a gathered skirt. And it's quite oversized, relaxed to wear. You can just pop it on over your head. There are no ties or fastenings needed. So it's quite a simple sew. And um, yeah, I just really love to wear it. I find it a really relaxed, comfy one to wear. In terms of sizing, the uh, paper pattern goes from a European 36 to 46, but there are a few extra sizes in PDF on the website, which I think takes you up to a European 52, which is a bust of 45 inches, I believe. And there might be one smaller size than the European 36 available in PDF too. And I've always made the smallest size um, in the pattern leaflet, and it's still quite oversized. It's a really loose, relaxed fit. You can see there's plenty of room. But I quite like that. It makes it really um, comfy to wear. And the fabric I made this version in is a really pretty viscose fabric, which makes me think of spring and the weather we're having at the moment. It's got this sort of somewhere between a royal and a navy blue base, and it's got these really pretty, almost geometric print flowers on with the greens and pinks. So yeah, I think it's quite a pretty print, and I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. I've got it on with some leggings today. I probably will need a coat when I go out for the school run later, but um, in the house I do feel quite warm at the moment, so that's what I'm wearing today. And then I'll show you my completed Bloomsbury blouse. So I've got it here. So here is the finished Bloomsbury blouse. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So this is the front here. You can see the lovely ruffle and I think it works really well in this viscose crepe fabric. I've got the mech band here. And on the back, you can see the buttons down the back. And then um, you can see the extra button I added that I mentioned. I think it would gape a little bit here. So I'm glad I did add that extra button. It's just reinforced with the interfacing so it should hold sort of fairly okay. And I've hemmed the bottom. I think I forgot to mention earlier in the week, the other adjustment I made was just to lengthen it by an inch, just because I wanted to be able to tuck it into jeans. So I thought I'd add a bit of length on to make sure there's plenty of length to be able to tuck into jeans. But I've got the brace and the sleeve and I'm really pleased with how it looks. And I need to get some photos of me wearing it. So once I've got those, um, I will be sharing it in my latest makes video, how I look in it. But yeah, I really love it. And it was a fun sew, if a bit of a fiddly one. 
And like I mentioned, I also finished the little blanket I've been knitting for my daughter last night. So I'm really pleased that's finished. And um, I popped out for her to find this morning and she was really excited to find that. So I'm glad she likes it. So here it is. And this is how it's turned out. So I pretty much used up all the wool um, to get to this length. And I think it's quite a nice length, actually. It's just the right length to be able to pop over her dollies when she's pushing them around in the push chair and that sort of thing. So it's a really cute stitch on here that's created with little hearts so yeah I really enjoyed knitting it and I'm really pleased how it's turned out and I might have a look in my yarn stash to see if I've got any other similar sized balls of wool left over from other projects I can maybe make another one so she's got a double push chair she pushes around it might be nice to have two to use on each bit of the push chair so that might be another little mini project for me but yeah I really enjoyed knitting that one up and I'm glad that one's finished for her so that is um everything that I've been doing this week I think my next plan is on the sewing front at least to get started on my sew frugal project or projects so i'm really looking forward to getting started on those and i need to get going because the reveal date is 31st of march so there's not too long to go on those but that should be a lot of fun so i think i'll probably finish off this video here i've got a few house jobs to do now i'm not sure there's going to be much sewing for me today um yeah i've got too many things to sort out ahead of the weekend so Thank you so much for joining me for a week of sewing and chats. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with my week. It's been really nice to pop on every day and share a bit of what I've been up to and what I've been wearing with you. If you've enjoyed the video as ever, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, then thanks for checking it out. I'd love it if you would subscribe and also press the bell icon so you're notified of my future videos. So I hope you've had a good week too and have a nice weekend planned. And I'll hopefully see you again for another vlog soon. So thanks again for watching. Bye.